welcome back to Top X Mystery Research Channel. We like to think of technological innovation as a gradual, steady, and fairly linear process. However, this is not true. Archaeological excavations throughout the world have revealed some mysterious ancient technologies that make modern people drop their jaw. Here are 13 of the most mysterious ancient technological discoveries ever discovered. When the Muslim fleet of the Umayyad Caliphate tried to besiege Byzantine Constantinople in 674, their ships caught fire. At first they were not worried. However, this was no ordinary fire. Once set on fire, it could not be extinguished, and when the whole fleet caught fire, even the sea itself caught fire. The Umayyad Caliphate perished due to that fire. No recipe has survived but historians speculate that it may have included oil, sulfur, or gunpowder. What makes Greek fire so impressive, however, is not the chemistry of the fire itself, but the structure of the pressure pump that the Byzantines used to launch it at their enemies. The Antikythera mechanism was found off the coast of Antikythera, a small Greek island between Kythera and Crete. It was discovered in 1901 when divers found a deposit of a sunken wreck of classical antiquity. The object was incomplete and in poor condition, but appeared to consist of approximately 37 bronze tools kept in a wooden box. Scientists originally thought that the Antikythera mechanism which aged more than 2200 years old, functioned as an ancient computer. This hypothesis was dismissed as too improbable, but more detailed studies in the 1970s confirmed it. CT scans reveal the astonishing complexity of the instrument. An attempt to copy the Antikythera mechanism in 2021 has been called the creation of genius. It could calculate the ecliptic longitudes of the moon and sun, the phases of the moon, the synodic phases of the planets, the excluded days of the Metonic calendar, and the Olympiad cycle, and countless other things. Damascus steel swords originated in the Middle East in the 9th century and were known for their appearance and durability. Being many times stronger and sharper than the Western swords used during the Crusades. Their name, derived from the Arabic word for water, refers not only to the Syrian city from which they came, but also to the flowing pattern that adorns their surface. This pattern was created through a unique forging process where small ingots of wood steel from India, Sri Lanka or Iran were melted with charcoal and cooled incredibly slowly. Demand for Damascus steel remained high for centuries, but gradually declined as swords were replaced by guns in armed conflict. By 1850, the secrets of this production process seemed lost. Created nearly 2,000 years ago, Haofeng Daidongyi has the honor of being the world's first seismoscope. Its country of origin was China, a country that has been plagued by earthquakes for as long as its inhabitants can remember. It was created by Zhang Hong, a distinguished astronomer, cartographer, mathematician, poet, painter, and inventor, who lived during the Han Dynasty between 78 and 139 AD. Hao Feng Daidongyi's design is both functional and aesthetically pleasing. The mechanism consists of a large decorated copper pot. The pot was provided with eight pipes that looked like dragon heads. A copper frog with a large gaping mouth was placed under each dragon's head. Zhang's seismoscope, explains a Taiwanese study in 2009, is hailed as a milestone invention because it can show not only when an earthquake occurred, but also the direction of its source. Although primary sources are unclear about how the seismoscope actually worked, researchers say that the vibration caused a pendulum in the pot to swing, releasing a small ball through the dragon's head and into the mouth of its corresponding toad, indicating the direction of an earthquake. Many ancient Roman architectural projects would not have been possible without Roman concrete. Also known as Opa Cementitium, was a hydraulically hardening cement mixture composed of volcanic ash and lime. The earliest known reference to Roman concrete is from 25 BC, in the Ten Books of Architecture by the architect and engineer Vitruvius. Vitruvius advises builders to use volcanic ash from the city of Pozzuoli in Naples, called Pozzolana or Pulvis Putialanus in Latin. When Vitruvius wrote his ten books on architecture, 
Roman concrete was still considered a novelty and used sparingly. That changed in 64 AD, when a fire destroyed two-thirds of the imperial capital. As the survivors began to rebuild, Nero's building regulations required a stronger foundation. Rome's transition to concrete, which, according to Pliny, does not crack, allowed the construction of architectural projects such as the Pantheon. The oldest and largest unreinforced dome in the world. Archaeologists use the term Baghdad battery to refer to a ceramic pot, copper tube, and iron rod that were found in Iraq. They believe the three distinct objects once fitted together to create a single device. The purpose of this device, which seems to have been capable of generating electricity, remains unclear. Wilhelm Koenig, head of Iraq's Antiquities Department originally claimed it was used as a galvanic cell to galvanize objects. This theory, although widely accepted after its initial publication, is not true, as no galvanized objects from the same period and region have yet been found. In 1993, Paul Kaiser of the University of Alberta in Edmonton formulated a different, less anachronistic, and therefore more credible hypothesis. He argued that the battery does not act as a galvanic cell, but as a local pain reliever that can relieve pain by emitting an electrical charge. In doing so, it would have replaced electric fish, which were sometimes used in Greco-Roman societies to treat headaches, gout, and other ailments. The Lycurgus cup is a Roman glass cage cup of the 4th century. It is remarkable both for the method of production and for the extraordinary work involved. The Lycurgus cup is made of dichroic glass, which shows a different color depending on whether light passes through it or not, red when lit from behind and green when lit from the front. The dichroic effect is achieved by making small portions of gold and silver nanoparticles into the glass, which are dispersed in colloidal form throughout the glass material. It is one of the most technically complex pieces of glass produced before the modern era. The study of how glass produces this dichroic effect has led scientists to believe that Roman craftsmen were the pioneers of nanotechnology. The mysterious head was discovered in 1933. Scientists believe it appears to be a fragment of a larger statue. Archaeologist Jose Garcia Payan found it in a pre-Columbian tomb near Tecaxic Calixtlahuaca in the Toluca Valley. According to the first tests, scientists believe that the statue is of Roman origin. This archaeological site was untouched, eliminating the possibility of accidental contamination. How did a Roman artifact find its way to pre-Hispanic Mexico? When the object was found, there was no date for this type of material. So it was not until 1995 when P. Schaff and G. A. Wagner performed a thermoluminescence test at the FS Archaeometry Unit in Heidelberg, Germany. Placing it between the 8th century BC and the mid-13th century AD. Since the statue is much older than the archaeological site where it was found, researchers speculated that it arrived there via an ancient route from Asia to the Americas. Brought by ancient Hindu or Chinese ships, the only thing that contradicts this theory is the fact that the object is too fragile to survive a thousand-year journey. Deep in the Costa Rican jungle in the 1930s, 300 almost perfectly round stone balls were found. They ranged from a few inches to 7 feet in diameter and weighed 16 tons. Scientists aren't sure who made them, how old they are, or what purpose they may have served. Many stones look wonderfully round, most of them are not as perfectly formed as they might appear to the casual observer. The best measurements were made by Lothrop in the 1950s. But his observations were hampered by the size of the larger balls and getting the gravity band around the balls which were still half buried in the ground. Not all balls are perfectly smooth either, and many show evidence of the tools used to make them. While most legitimate archaeologists doubt that the stones are the work of an ancient indigenous people, Wild stories have emerged from the sphere suggesting that they are related to aliens or Atlantis. Skeptics argue that primitive people with simple non-metallic tools could not have made such perfectly round and smooth stones. The builders of ancient Sacsayhuaman left behind precisely cut pieces of stone that challenged our modern builders in many ways. How did our ancestors manage to cut, transport and place stones weighing hundreds of tons? Who were the ancient builders of Sacsayhuaman? How did they manage granite, 
one of the hardest materials, so precisely and easily. The method by which the shape of the stone is precisely matched to the adjacent stones has been the subject of much speculation and debate. Several theories presented include The softening of the rock by a mysterious plant fluid, the decay of minerals from the heat generated by the large solar mirrors, and even extraterrestrial intervention. The surface of the blocks shows the effect of high temperatures, making them shiny and smooth. The stones are packed so tightly that no grass, steel, or any vegetation can enter between them, and no mortar was used in their construction. The Iron Pillar of Delhi, also known as the Ashoka Pillar, is 23 feet 8 inches high and 16 inches in diameter. It weighs more than 6 tons and is made of 98% iron. It was built by King Chandra, probably Chandragupta I, and is now located in the Kut complex in Maral, Delhi, India. The column is covered with inscriptions, the oldest is in Sanskrit, and historians have dated the inscriptions to between 375 and 415 AD. The purpose of the Delhi Iron Pillar is one of its many mysteries. Some say it was a flagstaff made for the king mentioned in the inscription. Others say it was a sundial in its original home in Madhya Pradesh. Why it no longer exists in Madhya Pradesh is another mystery. There is no evidence of who moved the pillar 1000 years ago, how it was moved, or why it was moved. The greatest and most talked about mystery of the Delhi Iron Pillar is how it remains so seemingly untouched for so long. Another mystery has to do with why the pillar didn't rust after 1600 years. Like many other mysterious objects, the Iron Pillar does not give up its secrets easily, and unfortunately some may be lost forever. The London Hammer, also known as the London Artifact, is the name of an iron and wooden hammer found in London, Texas in 1936. What's wrong with the hammer found in Texas, you might ask? A team of archaeologists checked it, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated back more than 400 million years. Additionally, the hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. It is much older than the time of the dinosaurs. The head of the metal hammer is approximately 6 inches long and 1 inch in diameter. The hammer is stylistically consistent with typical American tools produced in the region in the late 19th century. One possible explanation is that the highly soluble minerals of the ancient limestone may have formed a concretion around the feature through a common process such as petrification pitting, which often produces similar crusts around fossils and other cores. This bird-shaped object originates from around 200 BC and was found in Saktara, Egypt. No one knows the purpose of the Saktara bird, but more conventional theories suggest that it may have been a children's toy, a weather vane, or a decorative object placed on the masts of boats during ceremonies. But others, notably Egyptian archaeologist and physician Khalil Messiha, argued that the ancient Egyptians developed the first airplane known to man. The sycamore woodbird is thought to represent a smaller version of the monoplane, and Khalil added that the horizontal backplane of the object has been lost. With that, the bird could presumably function as a glider. It would not have been unusual for the ancient Egyptians to place miniature versions of their technology in their tombs. Most Egyptologists generally reject Khalil's claims. However, tests by aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson seem to have shown that Khalil was right all along. He built a replica of the bird with a stabilizing back pocket and allowed for Saccharolite conditions in a wind tunnel. The bird turned out surprisingly well. Sanderson noted that more than 2,000 years after the ancient Egyptians carved this mysterious bird, modern technology has shown beyond doubt that it could fly. So, which discovery do you think is the most flabbergasting? Leave your answer in the comments below.